So you're trying to get back into reading the Bible and you're really struggling. It doesn't make sense. It's hard to read. It's boring. I get it. I'm totally there with you. Today, I want to share with you how to create those beginner Bible study tips to create a strong habit, actually enjoy your time in the word and become a total Bible nerd. Let's begin. We all know that first day of school feeling when your stomach is in knots and you're nervous and you just have this feeling that like everything's gonna go wrong. I hate that feeling. But as many of you guys know, my boys started going to school this year. And so all summer I was trying to emotionally prepare to send them off to school and our like day to day to look different. And I was partly, I think, expecting for the boys to have a hard transition and me to enjoy it. And in fact, it turned out to be the opposite. They absolutely love it more than I could have ever imagined. And I have had a hard transition with them going to school. And so the first day of school, I'm driving through our little town. We live on this side of town, there's schools across. So we just drive across town. It's a small town every morning. And I'm just thinking like, okay, I have that new school feeling. Why am I so nervous? What is going on? And I'm driving and the boys are asking me like, you know, random questions and I'm trying to be all calm and normal, but on the inside, my heart is breaking and I'm so nervous. By the time I pull into the driveway and I drop the boys off, I'm shaking. And I'm like, if I can just get back to my studio, I'll calm myself down and I'll feel better. And yet once I got back to my studio here, I sat down at my desk and I was like, okay, maybe I just need to spend time with God's word because I'm still nervous. And so I spent time in the word and I did my Bible study and I was still nervous. So I was trying to answer emails and get my mind off of things. And I was still nervous and all day long, it was worse than even on my worst first days of school. I was more nervous than I've ever been on the first day of school and I wasn't even the student. It was pitiful. <laughs> like, and it still honestly happens. This morning it happened when I was taking the boys to school. I got my stomach in knots and I got nervous and I was like, I don't know, like, uh. I don't know how to explain that. Maybe somebody can psychoanalyze me. Maybe it means that I'm nervous if I can do life without them. I don't know. It's just a few hours a day. It's not that big of a deal, but it's a big deal for me. And the boys love it, so praise the Lord for that. However, I tell you this story and this quick little example of what a dork I am, because I think it's really easy easy when you get into studying how to Bible study. People like me, like spewing facts at you can easily overwhelm you. Like we're telling you a bunch of things. We're showing you our library of stuff and that can be like, great, what have I signed up for? That's a ton of resources behind this woman. She's really obnoxious with her crazy earrings. Like what have I signed up for, right? But to the number one question that I always get from people is like, okay, okay, but what do I need to know like for starting out? What do I do as a beginner on how to Bible study beginner tips? And so that's that's really what I want to share with you, how I would advise you to Bible study if you're just starting out recreating that Bible study habit or just starting reading the Bible ever. Those are the two types of people that typically find me as they're reading the Bible again for the first time or like getting back into having a Bible study or they've never read the Bible before and they're like, what the heck am I reading? So either way, my number one tips for you would be to create the typical like Bible study time, but also a Bible study place. Never have I ever had a good Bible study habit when it looks different every single day. Something probably psychological with the way that God made us, we create the best, the strongest habits by having them situational. So maybe it's the same drink doing the same thing every evening right before bed. Or maybe it's every single time I sit in this chair, I'm always going to do my Bible study. I'm not going to sit in this chair if I'm not doing my Bible study. Or before I get this reward, I need to do this. For me, it's I get to relax and kind of have my tech time and scroll the internet after I've done my workout for the day in the late afternoons or after dinner. And so I have to do my workouts. I have to do dishes and dinner and all that before I get to scroll on the internet. And that is my motivation to do that stuff. And then most of the time, by the end of the day, I don't even want to scroll on the internet. I want to read my books. And so it kind of just puts everything into its proper space. In the same way with Bible study, we need to have something to get us to do it or we're not going to do it. We need some kind of visual to trigger us to remember to do it. And then we need some kind of place, reward or whatever. And you know what works best for you psychologically probably, but I encourage you to have some kind of habit routine around this. Secondly, when it comes to like actually deciding what to read in the Bible, typically beginners will just go to any passage of the Bible. They'll flip open their Bible and they'll be like, okay, God, speak to me. Okay, that doesn't really apply. Speak to me. Mm, that makes no sense. 
ah, now you spoke to me, you know? And I would encourage you less so to do that because that's a really easy way to misuse the scriptures. I would encourage you to like start in a gospel. Maybe it's John or Matthew and just read through that book. Maybe it's a paragraph a day, maybe it's a chapter a day. Go through books at a time. That is probably one of the most healthy ways that you can do that. And then it would be really awesome, like brownie points, bonus points, if you could also listen to a series of sermons going throughout the book. Maybe it's your favorite pastor or a popular pastor or a teacher here on the internet. I have a series through Galatians, actually. If you wanna go through Galatians with me, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, I'll have it linked down below with a discount code if you wanna join me for that. Or if you're not reading through books and you actually wanna like read the Bible through cover to cover, I would encourage you to do some kind of Bible reading plan. Don't just loosely go through it because you'll probably end up running behind. The Bible is a big book and you do need to read a lot to make it through in a year. I have a Bible reading plan and it gives you grace days so that if you do miss a day, it doesn't mess anything up. It has 95 grace days. It's called the Grace Bible Reading Plan. I'll also have that link down below, but I'm not here to like sell you guys stuff. The point is, is have some kind of schedule, have some kind of accountability of I'm not just gonna open up anywhere. Like God is gonna meet me in the book of Matthew this summer <laughs> or in Galatians or whatever. So now that we've talked about the habit and the actual reading of the Bible, let's talk about the actual studying of the Bible because these are beginner Bible study tips. We don't wanna just consume the Bible. We wanna study it. It's God's word. If we believe that it's God's inerrant word alive and active, then we wanna study it. And we wanna dig deep and we don't just want surface level Christianity. We want God to impact our everything, to change our lives from the top to the bottom. Wait, from the top to the bottom. There we go. <laughs> so if I was a beginner, like getting back into a Bible study routine and trying to understand the Bible so that I can enjoy it, the place that I would encourage you to begin on going deeper in your Bible studies would not actually be commentaries. A lot of people will say, just grab a commentary and help you understand the text. But commentaries is a lot of additional reading. What I would encourage you to do is to grab a Bible dictionary. Mm, let's see if I can grab them. Ugh. Come on, upper body strength. Don't fail me now. These are the two I always pull off my bookshelves. Typically I'll grab this one first. It's the Tyndale Bible Dictionary. And then I also have the New Ungers Bible Dictionary. And I will have both of these also linked down in the description box. They're kind of six one half dozen the other. I just have two because if one Bible Dictionary isn't enough or doesn't have the entry, I'll go to the other one. And typically one of the two will have a pretty good entry on the topic. These are different than traditional dictionaries because they give the historical background information about and for the Bible. And they also give so much more information than just like a secular dictionary will give you. They give you the theology, they give you the Old Testament and the New Testament perceptions. They'll give you specifics to like the prophecy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if you're a beginner Bible studier, I would encourage you to grab one of these. You can even get them used, half price books, whatever, and set it next to your Bible when you're reading through the Bible. Then every single time a word, a place, a person, any kind of noun is mentioned, stop what you're doing, you can maybe finish reading the sentence and then look up that word in the Bible dictionary. You won't always have it, but most of the time it will transform your understanding of the passage because you'll come to find that like, I don't know, a place is so much richer that once you understand the information about that location, it makes the whole passage so much richer. Or once you understand the information about that word and it's used throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, it makes your understanding of that passage so much richer. And it will also, as you're reading through that book of the Bible or as you're reading through the Bible as a whole, give you so much knowledge about the Bible as a whole. It will just like skyrocket your knowledge of God, theology, Bible knowledge, all of that. Probably faster than an in-depth commentary would or an in-depth Bible study would. Now slowly you can start new skills like throwing in a word study here and there and verse mapping here and there. But if you're like just beginning and you're overwhelmed, grab a Bible dictionary and look up all the things there. If they don't have the entry, take that as God's sign to keep on reading. Reading. But when you do come across a location, a person, or a place, then you'll have so much rich knowledge to find. Once you've read your reading for the day or looked up the words in the dictionary, I would really encourage you to take notes. If you have a Bible journaling Bible, you can take notes right there in your Bible. I have a bunch of videos about how to Bible journal. I'm a fan of adding more space into Bibles. So taping in pages, taping in flaps, all of that stuff. If you want creative ideas, you'll find them here on my channel. But I would encourage you to, as you're learning, write it down, reteach it to yourself in your notes. And the purpose of this is not only for it to be preserved in your Bible for forever, so that next year when you read through the Bible again, you'll have these notes there in your Bible, but also because humans learn by reading and then writing. Like that's how it helps put it in our brain juices. <laughs> 
I would really, really, really encourage you to record your notes down in your Bible. Some people like Bible study journals and I've messed with them back and forth. I usually, where is it? I usually use my prayer journal as kind of like a Bible study journal and a prayer journal. However, I just find that whenever I take Bible study notes and they're not actually in my Bible, I lose them and I never look at them again. So I encourage you to take notes directly into your Bible. And if you were a beginner Bible journaler and you're beginning Bible studying, you could easily go down the tunnel of like all the Bible journaling supplies and the fancy pens and the fancy colors and the fancy sticky notes and the fancy washi tape. It's addicting. But this was never about all that. This was about loving God's word and getting into God's word. And so I would encourage you to get these thingies. Focus, 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 please focus. <gasps> there we go, I got it to focus. Okay, these Crayola Twistables are really great for Bible journaling notes, but they're thick. And so I would encourage you to get them like for coloring blocks of notes just to set them apart from other blocks of notes, but for specific underlining and color coding and all that, just get yourself some cheap old normal colored pencils. Colored pencils are the bomb. Dot com. And then really any kind of fine tip pen will work for you. Lots of people have like more expensive versions that they prefer. I think any black pen kind of works, but if you only have a little bit of space and you're doing any kind of like micro Bible journaling, I have recently been a really big fan of this one. It's Le Pen drawing pen and it really isn't expensive. I got it for like two or three dollars at Pop Shelf. I'm gonna recommend that just because it's so cheap and so fine. It's really, really fine point if you're taking notes not in a like traditional bunch of space kind of Bible. So you've created Bible study habit, you're reading through a book of the Bible, you've studied it by using a Bible dictionary, you're taking notes in your Bible and then I would really, really encourage you to do some kind of reflection at the end of your Bible study. At the end of my Bible study, I typically prayer journal about what I'm wrestling with. Sometimes I'll start my Bible study by like, I might need to clear my head. And so I'll throw everything that's jumbled up in my head that I'm stressing out about or that I'm thinking about needing to do today. I'll put that down as like a dump, like just a brain dump in my prayer journal. And then I do my Bible study and then I come back to my prayer journal. But either way, I end my Bible study in my prayer journal. And I just talk to God about all the things. <laughs> oh, here's one. I can show you this. Usually I can't show you guys the entries of my prayer journal because it's my prayer journal. It's very like intimate, it has other people's prayer requests, private stuff, whatever, but where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, here we go. <laughs> I honestly do not remember this day at all, but I just said, Father, I'm scared. And then I unpacked it on the paragraphs. So that's where prayer journaling can be really helpful. You've just read God's word. You've studied God's word. You've learned something about him and his word and his character, his work for redeeming his people for his glory. And now you get to apply it to your life through this reflective, prayerful, surrendered response. And so I find that my prayer journaling is most effective after, and I'm applying my prayers to what I just studied. But I also find it to be most effective when I'm as emotional and raw and real with him as possible. I've said it a million times and I don't think I can ever over state it, be as honest with God as you are with your spouse or your best friend or with anybody else. Be more honest with God than you are even with yourself. And what I mean by that is prayer isn't really prayer if you're not being honest with him. The act of prayer is this surrendered attitude, this honest, dependent, surrendered confession and petition to the Lord. Well, you're not gonna be honestly surrendered and repentant and petitioning the throne honestly if you're trying to put on a show for God, if you're trying to hide something from God, if you're trying to like be holy enough to talk with him. Be as honest with God as you possibly can and as real with God as you possibly can. That is when I really often find that application that I think most people come approach the scriptures for. And what I mean by that is like pretty much everybody ever will approach the scriptures and they'll be like, okay, I have this problem in my life. I need to figure out what school to go to or what house to buy or what to do about this issue in my life. And they approach the scriptures and they're like, okay, what do you have to say about this, right? They read for their life. And I'm really big here about like, the Bible's not about us, it's about God. God is the main character. It's a story of God redeeming his people for his glory. It's not about us, but it does apply to our life. And so I find that prayer journaling is really helpful, more biblical application for my private Bible study because I've read all about his work and then I get to respond to who he was in that Bible.
Bible story. I get to respond to the good work or the promises that I just read about in my prayer journal and then apply them to my personal life. So like, God, I know you're redeeming God. You're redeeming me. You're redeeming this broken situation. God, I'm scared. Like that one entry I just showed you. I'm scared, but I know you are the same God that was with Daniel in the lion's den in Daniel 6. Or you're the same God that was with Esther approaching the king. You know, all those, whatever I'm reading for the day, that is where I find the best way to apply scripture in my life and my personal Bible study because we can be biased when we're applying scripture to our lives. Anyway, the point of the story is I find it really helpful to prayer journal at the end. And then if you really want to like super brownie points and you really want to work on like memorizing scripture, I would pick one verse a week to try and memorize. It's okay if you need like two weeks per verse, but one a week is like an easy habit to start because it's like every Monday you pick a new verse and it can be verses that you read that week. It can be verses that you find online, whatever. Write them on note cards, use the flashcard method, whatever, and work on writing God's word on your heart, memorizing it so that you can live by it. Now I know I've just thrown a lot at you, but my ultimate goal is to have inspired you to go spend time in God's word because it really is life-giving. It really is good. It can really actually totally be fun. Become a Bible nerd with me, okay? Now, if you guys are having a hard time understanding scripture and you wanna learn about how I understand scripture every single time, check out this video here and I will see you guys in that video. Bye guys.